Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are back to work on the Ducati 848. Real quick, before we start opening a bunch of packages for this thing, in all the video descriptions, I got a bunch of discount codes for you guys if you want some quality products. Check them out. Now back on the 848, as you guys saw, we got some packages. Let's crack them open, show you what we got. That's right guys, the new belts are in. Probably noticed these are not OEM belts. That's because Santiago recommended these aftermarket belts which are actually proven to be better than the OEM. And Santiago runs these on his 848 and he's had no issues. Kinda hard to show you guys, but these are the exact same size as the OEM belts. So let's install these belts, time the engine up once again, remove the spark plugs if we have to, spin that rear wheel and see how the engine moves. We got a set of forceps and this tiny little tool piece right here that Santiago said I needed. Now these two pieces is the forceps and this piece were supposed to be if I needed to install any shims, but our engine is in spec. You guys also saw we got a dash, we got an ignition, we got a throttle body which had a Rizoma grip on it, which is a huge plus, I didn't even know that. We also have the antenna for the key immobilizer. We have a new ECU. All these pieces combined should make the bike run. Along with some OEM keys, and interestingly enough, SOS Diagnostics is written all over these pieces. Back in the day on my Ducati 1199, I had to get keys programmed from SOS Diagnostics to start that 1199 because it came with no keys. So I wonder if they have programmed keys to this dash, ignition, and ECU. And then we got even more packages to unbox for you guys, so let's get to it. So as you guys just saw there, the timing is actually off. I messed up the timing with these new belts. So we got to look back at the old photos Santiago sent us, retime the engine. Then we'll catch you guys for the tightening of the belts. Got the motor at TDC. The line is right next to the dot. These upper belts, I think those are off. This looks like it's supposed to be here on this knob. Down here, this is in line. So I believe this cam is good along with this cam. I think we're off up top here. Let me adjust it. Then we'll spin it over and show you guys. All right, we just adjusted the cams up here. As you guys can see, they're both spinning perfectly. Now it's time to adjust the tightness on these belts and Santiago's gonna help me out. Now, funny enough, you adjust these belts just like you would adjust the strings on a guitar. <laughs> yeah. So here's Santiago 
And here is the app we are going to be using. We will be tightening this bad boy down here. Here we go. I should tighten it a little bit and then strum the belt, right? Yeah, so just get your like your base, tighten it up, get your base, see where it's at, and then you go from there if you need to loosen it and tighten it. The movements of the of you adjusting it is gonna be very little. Like you can move it just a smidge and it's gonna adjust it a lot. Alright, let's do it. Let's try again without the gloves. That's way too high. Seventy seven, too low. Bro, that took me forever. It is so tough. It was extremely hard getting this lower tensioner like tight, and one tiny little movement would throw everything off. Yeah, right. This other side was way, way easier. Well, bro, I appreciate it. I appreciate the help on this. I would have, I probably would have blown my belts without it, so. <laughs> so Santiago sent over the specs for the belts. They need to be at 100 hertz, as you can see from this pick. So over and over again, I was tightening and loosening the belt tensioner, getting it right at 100 hertz on each of the belts. So man, that was tough tightening those belts to the right hertz. And the best I could do on the vertical and horizontal head was 106 hertz. And on here it says it's safe up to 110. So I think we're good. Also torque the nuts for the belt tensioners to spec. And let's turn over this motor one more time. Sweet, looks like we're ready to throw those covers on. So I bet you guys can guess what's in some of these packages. Let's crack them open and show you what we got.
parts are finally coming together. We got the new case cover on the vertical head. We got the air box on along with the gas lines and the injectors are plugged in. We also are gonna need to tighten down the clamps on the throttle bodies on both sides. We also replaced one of those annoying clamps with the hose clamp right here on this line that runs from the air box to the back of the engine or the clutch. Here's that other hose clamp to tighten and they make it easy. They even give you a little access hole. Along with cleaning everything up, man, it looks fantastic now. We buttoned up the servo motor along with the EVAB. That's all tightened down, good to go. All the lines are connected, except for the ones that are just sitting here that run to the gas tank. We are so close to starting this thing up, but we do have a few final things that we have to touch up on before we even attempt to crank this thing over. So first we gotta throw in the air filter. Then we gotta plug this radiator back in, tighten it down, connect all the lines. Also the throttle, we ran through the frame to connect to the handlebar. We still gotta mess with this, but we also have to address all the wiring. Now you guys saw earlier, I picked up a bunch of connectors right here. So my plan is to splice in these connectors wherever there is these lousy connections. I also gotta figure out what connects to what because all this was disconnected when I got the bike. And also simple things like running this behind the frame so it looks more tidy and, and cleaning up that copper that's exposed right there and plugging in the new ECU. Now this ECU is actually from a Ducati 848 Evo. And from what I've been told from Santiago and what I've read online, the ECU mapping is actually different from the base model to the Evo. Now from what I've read, the engines are the exact same. Using the Evo ECU should gain me actually some horsepower as long as everything works out. I hope this ECU works out because it will gain us some horsepower and it should work with all the immobilizer issues. I can't imagine the timing or anything else engine wise would be different with this ECU, just more air fuel ratio. We've got a lot to do. Let's keep buttoning up the bike and we got more packages.
So I am basically brand new to throttle by wire throttles. Like the bikes in here are electronic throttle, electronic throttle, electronic throttle, electronic throttle. But my R1M back in the day was throttled by wire just like this 848 and look at how loose this thing is. I honestly had no idea how to adjust this, but check this out. This is how you adjust the tightness on the throttle. As you can see, look at all that slop in the throttle. But inside here, there's actually two pins that rotate and you'll see the gap in between here gets larger. So you can see the gap is now larger on this first adjustment and I think that tightens the cable. Do it to the second one and see if the throttle has less slop. All right, let's try it out. Oh, dang. Oh man, look at that, nothing. That's awesome. I assume you want a little bit of slop in it just so that there's not too much tension on those cables. But man, back in the day, I should have totally tightened down my R1M throttle because it was pretty loose, but that's cool. Now I know how to do it. These grommets slide right over it to protect the frame from any scratches. So now that that is adjusted and I learned how to tighten a throttle by wire, we completed all the wiring, all the splicing is done. The rest of the wiring is tucked back in there. Everything is on these tabs that are actually like welded onto the frame. Another tab there. And it's the same thing on this side. We topped up the coolant to the max fill line. All the radiator hoses plumbed and I used a little tiny baby hose clamp on the edge here because I do not like the other style. This style is just so hard to tighten. It's, it's not worth the effort. We also tightened the throttle bodies on both sides. Those are good to go. So now let's move along to this left side of the bike. We've got an ECU to put in, a battery, and a battery cover, which I didn't even know I needed. This is the battery cover for the Ducati 848, and man, it looks funky. Bolts on right through the top. And we are also gonna clean up the extra wires laying around over here and make it look good. battery works which sends power to the ECU to the ignition and then back to the dash that's awesome so far so good on the components we've installed so far we clean this side up real well threw in a battery which is the exact amperage that this bike needs along with this cover for the battery I took the battery tender in here just for now because I don't want to use it just yet moved the coil plug back behind the frame where it's supposed to be and all the other wiring by the ECU and the kickstand is all tucked away we are just about ready to start this thing we'll catch you guys in the next one see ya